So I want to talk with you guys about how people will be so happy when you fall on your face, you mess up, you fall into sin, you lose some things, you lost your job, they will rejoice. You know, people who are unsaved, they do that. But what about people that say that they're Christians? Honey, they will be rejoicing. Oh, you got into a car accident? Oh, I'm so sorry. But they are so happy. Do you believe that there's such sickos walking around within the body of Christ? They will swear up and down that God caused you to get into a car accident. They will swear up and down God struck you and put you in the hospital. They will swear up and down that the reason why this happened to you, why your husband did this, why your wife did this, why this is happening in your life is because you did not obey them. They really act like God is their personal assassins that's going out like a ninja at night, just slitting throats of people who don't obey them. How delusional. There are people that will rejoice in the, your, the times that you have fallen, the times that they felt like they got over on you, they got you out of their church, they got you... They, they caused your business to fall. They were able to cause people to not support what you're trying to do. And I want you to know that when people fall away, whether it's a business, it's because they were never meant to go to the next level that God's going to take you. If nobody's listening to your podcast, nobody's listening to your channel, you're only getting tumbleweed views, you keep speaking. When I first started this channel... I don't think anyone watched my videos. I have a video just sitting there for months. No one viewed it. But the Lord told me to be consistent. Get up and do what I told you to do. Go and teach. Go and go on there. Go and do this. Do your best. Don't go, oh, no one's looking. God says, do what I say. So I want to encourage you right now that even if there are people that's not supporting something that you're doing, and it is just you on there, you may be trying to start a prayer line, and the word went out that they should not come to your prayer, get on the prayer line with you. You, just because people are not on there, you get up as planned, get on that prayer line and pray by yourself. You get up and get on your channel and do what God has told you to do. Even if it's just you, they didn't show up. They got the word. There was a bolo out means be on the lookout. That's what bolo stands for. And people didn't show up to help you to do something. Work with what you got and do what you can do. Maybe you need to just alter some things. You may need to tweak some things, but still go out and be faithful and do what God tells you to do. There are people that want you to fail. There are people who say that they're of God. It's bad enough there are people who are not saved that may want that. But how sad when it's people that's in the household of faith that want you to fail, that want you to fall, that rejoice when you do. Remember when Samson was inside the Colosseum and he had his eyes put out. Oh, there were people who rejoiced. Look at him. Look at, oh, look at him. He used to be doing these riddles and he was so strong. Look at him now. They were happy. But they didn't realize that something great was about to happen. They saw Jesus on the cross. Oh, look at you. You saved everybody else. Save yourself. Come on off that cross if you're so great. But they didn't know that something great was supposed, was about to happen. And so we can read them of different things that's happened in the Bible where people at some point in their lives, people were laughing at them. Oh, they laughed and mocked David, this, this man, I can't remember his name. He was so glad to see David running from his own son, Absalom. And he was there with his, his family and with all his, his, uh, um, his men of war around him. And this man is, yes, good for you, David. You finally get what you, des what you deserve. And he's throwing dust and stones at David, not knowing that David was simply in a transition. And so there's people who will be happy. They see you at your low point. They, oh, they saw you, oh, you got divorced or whatever happened. They, they saw the drama. They came into your home and saw all the, the everything out of sorts. You're in your lowest points. They see you in your place of depression. You're so depressed. You're so down. You couldn't even clean your house. But you know what? They're, they're going to capitalize on that. Oh, we came in and the dishes were dirty and there was a mold in the fridge. And oh, it was so terrible. It becomes sport to tell about your low points. They are happy. 
There's some people you're crying and you're calling them and you want them to just to just strengthen you. And they say, you see, I told you, have you ever had that? I told you if you had if you hadn't done this and this, this wouldn't have happened to you. Nevertheless, I pray for you. Don't accept the most stanky prayers, them janky prayers, because their heart is already terrible towards you. Their heart is not with you. The Bible says people say eat and drink, but you have to be mindful of the fact that they're inside their heart. They're drawn swords. And so there are people that they will see you in your moments when you are down and they're happy. Oh, they're watching it. And inside they're happy to see you like that. Oh, especially if you've been doing great and some things happen with your finances. Oh, they get so glad. Mm -hmm. I know that would have happened. I wonder how she's going to do this now. Oh, they repossessed his car. Oh, this happened. Oh, that happened. Oh, this happened. But they don't know that sometimes you are just in your transition. You may be having a job experience. Maybe not to that degree, but you're having a job experience. And you are transitioning to have the greater things. You're in a transition to get the better things and people will think in their minds that oh goody 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 looky 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 but they don't know what God has planned for you that's why you have to discern in your heart who's around you discern in your heart who you have around you even when you're not feeling well Sometimes when you're sick, be careful who you bring around you when their spirit's not right and you're in such a vulnerable state. You can't just call anybody to come over. Sometimes you got to ask God to just help me, bring me through this. Sometimes God is going to have the most unlikely people help you. Oh, glory to God, I've, I've had that. I normally have my family. My family will come and they'll help me. But there's been times where I've had to have something done and I, I just did not... Tell my parents, did not tell my family. There wasn't enough, enough time, okay? And I've had people that where I thought they would be there, they were not. And the ones that I didn't think God utilized them and put them in my path to help me. And one of the things you have to realize when God pulls you away from everybody else, you have to learn to open your mouth to people who you probably don't want to ask them, but God has them in your life for a reason for such a time as this. Sometimes they're the ones you got to ask, hey, can you help me do this? Can you help me do that? Hey, I've got to go do this. Can you, can you escort me to do this? God will place it in their hearts to help you. I understand we got to still be careful. You don't want to invite, you know, Chucky up in your house. But I'm trying to say, guys, there are people who God has in your path for such a time as this. But what happens? Sometimes your pride. Oh, I don't want to ask them. I don't know now. Oh, but God has placed it in their heart already to give them the heart to say, okay, sure. There are people who rejoice in your downfall. They rejoice in those moments that you are down. But if you read in the word of God, many great men and women in the Bible have had moments that they were down. They was Ruth. She couldn't even afford to pay attention. She couldn't afford to pay attention. She was broke, busted, and disgusted. And God was transitioning her. Even Jesus himself, when he was born, he went through some things. His life was already on the line from he was a baby. But yet, and guess what? In his wake, young boys, ten, two years old and under, babies were murdered because of him. Because Herod got angry. Herod just wanted the wise men to tell him where Jesus was and he would have killed baby Jesus but God wasn't having it so in him being in him being led to safety all these other children were killed and see someone would say no that can't be the Messiah look what happened in your moments when you are down and you are out and everything seems to be falling apart I want you to be encouraged I want you to hold fast to God. I want you to keep looking up and realize you are simply in a transition. 
God never promised us that we were never going to go through anything. God never promised us that everything was going to be all spicy and cool. God says, I will be with you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For my, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Because he's going to be with us every step of the way. They may rejoice, but at the same time, they're going to be going, oh my goodness, what happened? They may be happy right now, but you are transitioning. They may be gloating right now, but God is taking you to a higher place. Only you can tap out. Pay them no mind. Behave yourself wisely just like, like, like David did. He just kept going when that man was laughing at him and throwing things. Jesus, he focused on the Father. He looked up and called out to him because he knew that that was not going to be his end. And I want to tell you when people are rejoicing and happy that things happen in your life, that should tell you something. You know, there was this guy that died. I didn't know who he was, but he was, I guess he was on YouTube and he was talking, speaking some truths or, well, what he believed was the truth. He spoke a lot of things that I guess he really probably offended a lot of women because he just spoke and he died. He just suddenly died, probably a, of a heart attack or something like that. And man, oh man, I tell you what, don't know the guy, never listened to him. But what I saw was there were so many people that were happy that he was dead. And I want to tell you as a living person, to be happy someone is dead, you're already dead. Anyone that rejoices when a person dies and still can say evil against a person who is dead, you're already dead. You know, this one was, this man was not some sort of a, a man who killed, you know, when people talk about Hitler, well, people are not going to really speak highly of Hitler. When people speak of a mass murderer, they're not going to speak highly of him. It's, they did something terrible and some people are like, oh my gosh, you know, oh, about time or whatever they say. But, and I'm not saying that necessarily right, but you can see why someone will say that. Like, oh, he's gone. Thank goodness. He was a tyrant. He was a terrible person. But even then we should not be happy when someone is dead. They are dead. They are wherever they have it, whatever condition they died in, they in another place. And so this person died and here are women specifically that are gloating and happy that he's dead. And I want you to know that there are more people like that, that they would have so much bitterness in them. That even in death, they can't say, well, wow, that's sad. Even if you don't like the person. Now, oh, I'm glad he's dead. No, you're already dead. I understand that there may be some of you, there may be some things that where you're like, no, I'm glad this person's dead. Maybe this person tormented you. Maybe you have, I understand that there's situations where a person just says, I am glad this person is gone. But there's a thin line with that. You got to be healed from that. But others, they just rejoice in death. they are people, they'll attend the funeral of someone they hated. Just so they can see them in the casket. Oh, you're dead. Oh, the scary. So you have to understand there are people that will... Be happy that you, you fell and this happened to you and that happened to you. You must discern them. That's why you must be careful who you share with, who you tell things to, who you're asking to pray with you, who you're joining hands with to fast with. Because sometimes you're fasting and you're praying and you're touching and agreeing with someone who hates you. And as soon as you pr they pray with you, all hell breaks loose in your life. You fasten with somebody and your life is falling apart. Women, be careful who you're touching and agree with. Stop asking these women to be praying with you about your husband. 
Because not all of them have the right mind regarding your husband. They want your marriage to end. Not all women are like this, but you must discern. You must discern. You got to be careful. You got to be careful touching and agreeing with women, trying to fast and pray for a man. Watch it. Sometimes that's okay, but sometimes it's witchcraft. But let me get back on, to, on, 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 on topic here. And again, it's not always the case, but sometimes it is. You can't fast and pray and that man is in a relationship. There are people that will rejoice when you are down. They'll be happy, but God will vindicate you. You're in your transition. Pay them no mind. Focus on God, and you're going to see what he is going to do. When you are at your lowest, when you don't have your car, when you have lost your stuff, when you have lost your job, that's when you're going to see who people really are. That's when you're going to see who your family really are. That's when you're going to see who your friends are who your real friends are. That's how you're going to see who you're married to when you're sick and you need them, when you are no longer able to do the things you used to do. COVID and people being locked in the house, that's when they saw the truth of who they were married to, who they've been living with. When you are at your lowest, remember what you learn on the way down. Because when God brings you up just like Joseph... His brothers thought they had gotten rid of him. And they were, oh, we got rid of him. But they didn't know a famine was coming. And it was going to be their brother that was placed in a position of power that's going to be able to help them. You see, Joseph still had to have a heart that he did not hold animosity. Otherwise, he would not have been able to forgive his brothers and to help them in the famine. That would have been his opportunity to get the ultimate revenge. So keep your eyes fixed on God because those who are laughing because they threw you in the pit now or those who are rejoicing because now you're like you're no longer in that position of authority you were in and they see you like Samson or oh, used to be mighty but now you're holding on to these pillars with your eyes put out. They have no idea that God is getting ready to take you to a higher level that they're going to be surprised. You know what? They're going to be real quiet. They're going to be real quiet. When they see that elevation, but they don't have to speak. It doesn't matter because they were speaking all along. They were talking all along. They were rejoicing all along. They were clucking and chirping together. In their little onion patch, whatever they do, just pungent together. But God had a plan for you. You make sure that you don't engage in their mess. You ensure that you do not disqualify yourself by falling into fleshly behaviors like they are. Keep your eyes fixed on God because even though they rejoice with you, they're going to at some point be able to look up and they won't be able to deny. At the end of it all. Like that Roman soldier said, when Jesus gave up the ghost, truly this was the son of God. And they'll be able to say, truly this was a daughter of God, or this is a daughter of God. This is a child of God. This is a man of God. This is a woman of God. Because they're going to see how God transitions you. Stay strong.